Welcome to chapel. My name is Kai, and this is the student council. Hi! This is the second week of our series, Hear Me Roar. Speaking of being loud, how many of you guys enjoy singing really loudly? Raise your hands. <laughs> what? Now, put your hands down, but raise your hand if you have a birthday this month. Nobody? Well, it's Mrs. Patty, Mrs. Erickson, and Mrs. Hall had a birthday, has a birthday this month. Let's sing to them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Paul. Happy birthday to you. I love birthdays, but I'll be honest, singing the happy birthday song is my least favorite part of any birthday. It's cool when you're in a big group like this because everyone is singing. So no one can hear if your singing voice messes up. But have you ever been to a birthday party where one person started saying happy birthday and no one joined in? It kind of sounds like this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Okay. Yeah, it's the worst, and so awkward. If you've ever been the person awkwardly singing a birthday solo, you know the only thing that can make the situation more bearable is, it, is if another friend in the room helps you and joins in. Or maybe you're more familiar with another scenario. Have you ever been listening to music in the car and got really into it? Like you were so into it that you basically forgot anyone else was even around? Maybe you were singing at the top of your lungs, arms up, pumping your fist, getting ready to give the next line everything you've got, and then the music cut out and you were still singing, but the song was over. So awkward. That's kind of how it can feel sometimes when we want to take a, a bold stand for God. Whether it's telling someone why I believe in God, speaking out when someone isn't being treated with love or dignity, or not being afraid to say I go to church, read, read the Bible, or even trust in Jesus, Jesus. There are so many opportunities to be bold about your faith. Even if you're sitting here today and you're not sure what you believe about God just yet, I'm guessing you can still relate to this desire to boldly stand up for what's right. We all want to be strong, brave, and bold, but sometimes we can start our strong boldness and willingness to take a stand, but quickly fade out. Why is that? Maybe it's because we feel like that person at the birthday party singing all by ourselves. We may want to take a stand and be bold, but it's not easy to do that when we feel like we're all alone. Last week we started a new series called Hear Me Roar. In this series, we're gonna look at some scenes from the book of Daniel, which we can find in the Old Testament of the Bible. The reason we're looking at the story of Daniel is because Daniel's example can teach us, to, teach us and inspire us in the area of boldness. Last week we talked about how Daniel fueled his boldness by filling up on God first. Today we're gonna look at a second way we can fuel our boldness for God, and it has to do with singing happy birthday by yourself. This week's big idea is, drumroll please. Be all together. If you remember from last week, our Bible story happens in a specific context that's important to understand. At this point in time, the people of God, including Daniel, have been taken captive by an enemy nation called Babylon, who which was ruled by King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel was one of the handful of men chosen to be trained and educated in the ways of Babylon. They didn't really have a choice about being there, but Daniel and his friend resisted, resisted rules, custom, and expectations of Babylon in order to take a bold stance against any kingdom that was not God's kingdom. Incredibly, Daniel's protest against the kingdom of Babylon actually won him favor and influence in the eyes of King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel was given a position of influence in the government and was even allowed to appoint people of his choosing to other positions of influence. Daniel chose three of his friends who were also followers of God to help him rule the kingdom of Babylon. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and today's story is all about them. This week's story is Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 through 23. If you do not have a Bible, I will say it, but if you do, you can follow along. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, perfects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other province officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps 
perfects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, Nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, scyther, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown to a blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard it, the sound of the horn, flute, scyther, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, scyther, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold, and that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown in a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews who you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to your majesty, they neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my god or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, scyther, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I have made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what god will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the god will we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Daniel, friends, and fellow followers of God were told they needed to bow down and worship a golden statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. If there was any question in their minds about whether or not the kingdom of Babylon was an enemy of God, this commanded th that question. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew they couldn't bow down to any other than God, even if that meant they would be killed. So they didn't. These men refused to worship anyone other than God they knew, loved and served. They refused to give up on their convictions. As a result, they were thrown into the center of an enormous furnace. This is the end of the story, but I want us to pause and talk about something important. Yes, it's difficult to be bold when you feel all alone, but do you remember what we said about singing happy birthday? It's, it's easier to sing boldly when someone else is singing with you. Yes, these men knew the consequences of their bold, bold stance could be death, but they knew they weren't in it alone. Do you see how many times we hear the words we and they during this story? These three men were in this together. They weren't alone. They could be bolder because they were bold together. I can only imagine the conversations that were happening behind the scenes. You know, the ones that didn't get recorded. I'm guessing each of these men have moments of doubt, but based on how the story turns out, I'm also guessing that when one person doubted, the others encouraged him to keep going. Guys, we're gonna die. What are we doing? Dude, God is faithful. It's all gonna be worth it. Following Jesus is easier with friends, period. So let's see how this story ends. I'm gonna read a passage from Daniel 3, 24 through 30. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair on their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's commands and were even willing to give up their lives rather than to serve or worship any god except their own. Therefore, I decree that, the mo that people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had each other to help them be bold. But do you see what happened in this passage? There was someone else in the furnace too. It was clear to everyone that God was there with them. I don't think any of these men would say that it was easy to take a stand and be this bold. But I think they would agree that being bold is easier when you're being bold together. God created us to be relational. We are built for relationships and we crave relationships. We thrive when we have others around us to encourage us and cheer us on. That's true in every area of our lives, but it's especially true when it comes to our faith. When we do hard things with people who are all working for the same things, difficult things become a little less difficult. So here's my question for you. Are you surrounding yourself with good friends or are you trying to be bold all alone? There are plenty of times when you're going to need to be bold about your faith. You probably won't be pressured to worship a giant golden statue or else be thrown into a fiery furnace, but you might feel God nudging you to share with someone why you believe what you believe. Invite a friend in church with you. Defend someone who's being hurt, bullied, or ignored. Last week, we said that if you want to be bolder, fill up on God first. This week, I hope you see that. I want to learn to be bolder. You'll need to learn how to be bold together. Have a great week. <laughs> Wait, did we say anything? Just Kai said something. Just, and then he's Mom, getting to really sing how we do it. Did you start recording? Daniel chose three of his friends who are also followers. Relational. 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 Relational.